All right, all right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. This is episode two of Free Flow with Sorsha and Julia. Hey. Um, so we are uh, we are finding our footing with all of this at the moment and kind of experimenting and just being playful and curious, which is perfect for this episode because this is episode two and we're exploring uh, inner spring, uh, which is all about kind of curiosity and playfulness um, in our cycles. So um, I think Julia, what we'll do, um, I'll I'll share this. Uh, we actually did um, a few weeks ago. We did our first free flow recording um, live over on Instagram, and we explored yeah. inner winter. So we're actually going to re-record that because Instagram doesn't always save to other like my phone. Um, so we're yeah. going to do some we're going to do some of that on Zoom. So we'll have more of an intro um, into what this is all about um, on that first episode. Um, so today we're going to explore inner spring. And inner spring is the follicular phase. I love saying that. Um, and it's kind of your, uh, well, as you're coming out of your, as your cosmic egg, as I call it, which is the uh, the bleed cave, as you're coming out of your bleed, your inner winter, and you're kind of emerging like a little, a little hatching, a hatchling is what I call it, like a hatching chick, a hatchling. Um, and you're kind of just peeping out, coming out of your, uh, your little cave, your little bubble. <laughs> exactly trying not to like smash the egg angrily into pieces <laughs> um, <laughs> um and um, I, as always I'm looking at this uh through the lens of um having PMDD and also ADHD we'll be doing a whole episode on PMDD later so if you don't know what that is it's all good um and uh Julie is really coming at this from a um uh FAM so fertility awareness method um, so quite new to yeah. using um, the inner cycles. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. So Julia, uh, yeah. what day of your cycle are you on? Uh, so I'm on. I should have checked this. <laughs> um, and I did. Say, have time. Do we say eighteen in the live? Did you? Say I 18? I think I'm on about day eighteen. Mm. Um, so basically, I'm transitioning between um summer and autumn Mm. and I'm and um we were talking about um the Indian summer yes I'm actually having a little energy spike Mm -hmm. well today I felt like I was quite energetic so even though I'm going into autumn and then um I remember saw you were telling me about the Indian summer yes yeah yeah yeah. so we kind of have those uh as julie was saying my leaves are turning brown you know you kind of (laughs) brown we're kind Um, of uh, having that vibe as we yeah sort of that post ovulation um kind of dip really and then we kind of get a little resurgence and my um my friend carly from um moon forest flow she was my um um menstrual mentor for a little while last year and she kind of called it an Indian summer and I love that because I thought actually it is it's a bit like just before sort of progesterone really yeah. kind of kicks in um you have that little extra kind of boost um so and yeah and crossover days are really interesting we'll we'll do a whole like, episode on them because I think it's worth oh, cool. exploring but as we're looking yeah at the cycles it's kind of as the as the seasons it's really the um, yeah you have your winter spring summer fall and then we kind of like I like to add in that Indian summer um, and then also those crossover days so as we're kind of um, a bit like you know in real life really we kind of have uh, if you look at the wheel of the year you've got like winter solstice summer solstice you kind of have those key bits but then you also have like Samhain which is like the bit of Halloween kind of between a harvest and like uh, you know the depth of winter so you you can kind of see it mirrored there too um, but yeah and I I'm kind of the same so I'm sort of the opposite um, end of the spectrum to Julia today so I'm on cycle day five and that for me is like kind of a crossover day I have like a little bit of a bit of spotting um, normally and then um, and I'm also just kind of emerging kind of from that yeah from the, the little cosmic egg um, so <laughs> there is that kind of tenderness there a little bit like a I don't know some shoots coming from I don't know a little seed or something so it's uh yeah we're kind of opposite opposite ends you know it's like I was thinking about more about these shoots like coming out and so we do a lot of gardening and growing food and 
when the little shoots are out, you like you plant them in the ground and then you put a little collar around them. Mm. Like a little, okay, it's usually like a plastic, a reused, you know, recycled plastic bottle. Um, so and it and you call it a collar. So you put it around the little shoot so it doesn't just get eaten straight away. Okay. Oh, I like, like that. So we kind of like, like yeah. ourselves. I feel like that could be a bit of a an in, I'm pretty sure that's a BDSM term, but I kind of like it in a in the <laughs> Guys, <laughs> it's gonna be a meme or something on my Instagram, I think. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of protect, protecting. It reminds me also of like you know a dog collar. <laughs> yeah, like when they've got the comb. <laughs> yeah, and it's sort of like I'm protecting you, but you can't you know lick your wound or whatever. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of that like yeah, giving ourselves yeah. like protection and um. Yeah, not just leaping out. And I think one of the things we were kind of exploring um, in the live was that idea of um, kind of holding back a little bit, kind of having that resurgence of energy, but not uh, kind of pacing ourselves, which I find really difficult, probably because of ADHD. <laughs> so I'm like, either completely go or I'm like slow. <laughs> it's, like, it's hard to have an in-between. So I'm really learning yeah. this year, really learning with um, the menstrual leadership program as well. I've been like, oh, pacing, pacing is is everything, um, you know, and, and it's kind of holding a little bit back in your inner spring um, so that you can so that you're not burning out um, ovulation in a summer. Because you can really, I've done that many, many, many times, many, many cycles in a row. It takes time <laughs> to learn. So it's OK if you do. Um but that would be, yeah, one of the biggest things is that resurgence of energy and kind of noticing that, um, but just reining it in a little bit and holding a bit back for yourself and so, and also for the people around you, right? So, yeah, I don't know if you get that, Julia. I don't know if you have, um, you know, a big, a big kind of forwarding of energy. I think you did mention it on the live, but I can't remember your answer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like I like 10 mean... minutes ago, you know, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about planning and you said this is a really good time to plan but mm. um and and you were saying that you like to plan like you you know you look at your calendar and you like to plan your thing you know what you're doing with your business and that and I said that for me it's about a, like organizing things to like organizing events and things to do with people so I I just get this burst of like I'm gonna message everyone I know and like arrange to meet them all yeah. and then I and then sometimes you know that spills over into winter and I forget mm. that it's gonna be my wind because I've I, I'm only about two cycles into being aware of when my seasons are yeah um, yeah and I have a fairly irregular cycle as well so so sometimes I'm not exactly sure which, which season I'm in. And so, yeah, I'm mm. like, man, loads of stuff. So I'll plan to meet all these people. And then I'm just like, oh, my God, it's exhausting meeting all these people. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's a bit like the, the extrovert has taken over the introvert's diary. Yeah. And I really do feel like that. And I think that's part of yeah. the PMDD as well is a bit like someone messaged me once and they said it's like, being Jekyll and Hyde because it really is and it's not just like with your personality where like someone will breathe or maybe I'm breathing and I'm like why is that noise you know it's uh, <laughs> it's also like it's also like the I'm energy really level alive. I have it's like I kind of go from this like extroverted yeah. that's kind of coming out now to being like really yeah. really introverted of, of just like don't talk to me so again it's really tricky to like delegate and manage that um that planning so I think it's just worth yeah taking taking stock and don't let your inner kind of spring maiden or ovulation queen you know don't let them completely take <laughs> over your planning um I, I, you know in a in an ott way and, and and one of the things i was saying in the live as well was um how i how i yes i do mark out my period in my you know in red in my red days in my calendar but also i've really started to literally in the last couple of cycles really to kind of slow my roll and be like right this is this is the but luteal phase for in autumn and where PMDD really flares up that's going to start about 12 to 14 days before um, and the energy is really going to dip sometime in that window normally for me day 17 day 18 I'll wake up the brain fog will be whew, like mm -hmm. hand of the Baskervilles where it's like all misty on the you know on the moors <laughs> that's like my brain <laughs> yeah 
So I, and I know really and I notice cool. that instantly. So I really put that into my diary as well. And when I'm when I'm doing yeah. bits and bobs, I have that in in there so that I can start to slow down. Because otherwise, yeah. it's really hard to slow down. Because society isn't built for like slow living. You know, it's kind of a movement yeah. because people are like you know biting back a bit, um, and it's not yeah. so celebrated. So yeah, it's um, planning planning the rest. Mm. I think that's really that's really good so like because when you think planning like me to me planning is what I just said like doing like being active but actually you yes. can plan rest as well I really yeah like that. yes yeah and I think yeah. um and reminding ourselves that rest is not the same as sleep because I used to be like yeah I've got loads of sleep and and one day <laughs> someone was like you know that rest and sleep are not the same thing and I was like my mind was literally blown I was like oh my god that's actually not the same thing they're actually yeah. right yeah okay my whole my whole brain was like oh my god so it's yeah, <laughs> planning in you know um maybe someone can babysit your kids or maybe I think we were saying as well on the live I said maybe it's maybe it's the time if you want to plan so, for some people to come around in like luteal phase it would be like come round, it's potluck rather than like you're going to cook a three-course meal bring you know <laughs> bring it bring you know you bring a star you bring a dessert I'll make some stag bowl or something easy and we'll watch yeah. a movie or something like that so yeah like you know like pajamas <laughs> yeah exactly like slumber party style like planning <laughs> that is is perfect so actually it's so funny you were mentioning the pajama thing as well because I am um I've got something very interesting coming soon there's a couple of things so um I do have a guide that's coming out very soon that's called seasons and cycles so we can explore that more um, and there'll be some there'll be some stuff coming out in the email list. So people seeing mm. this, you will see it. If you see a clip yeah. of this and you've not seen it through my email list because I've put it, I don't know, on social media somewhere, then um, get on it. <laughs> and yeah. um, and you'll, get on you'll the get, list. Uh, get on the list, guys. Because uh, I'm really excited about that. A lot of people and and Dawn in the live, she was asking one of the one of the ladies watching was asking about um uh, uh seasons things because she doesn't have a bleed anymore so it's really interesting mm-hmm. to kind of work with the moon um and that will be covered as well so um yeah that's one thing and then also uh going back to the pajama thing is that I'm also um having a uh I guess should we call it a school it's like a little container it's a six-week container uh Ooh. called cycle sync 101 and I'm really excited okay. and one oh. of the things we'll be covering will be um yoga for different parts of the cycle and luteal phase will be like a pajamary, beddy, slumber party kind of <laughs> like that's just the vibe of it. Um, I've yeah. done it. I taught a class like that. Oh, a couple, probably in during the pandemic to some ladies on a Sunday morning, and they were like, "Oh my god, Sunday slumber!" And it's yeah, yeah. it was just really yummy. So that will be. Uh, I'm also we're both in our pajamas right now. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so but, but, yeah, just go back and kind of. <laughs> Yeah. having that rest and planning for the rest and like you say planning mm. the because it's still a doing thing you know it's just a yeah. different like energy yeah, of doing yeah. um and and it's not one that we necessarily celebrate and talk about as much so I love yeah planning in like pockets of rest is what I call it well like peace pockets um mm. where it's like oh where can I have a peace pocket peace and pocket. you know so I love I think it. that's great so yeah think of that and yeah. I think also in the spring is a nice time for that because we are tenderly coming out and it, it took me a while and I think different people will have different um for want of a better word but strengths a different part of their cycles I think for some people they'll like they'll really nail like I don't know for me like luteal phase in some ways because it was just like editing stuff and being quite like really harsh on myself but to an extreme <laughs> um but kind of editing stuff and getting things done and like critical like being quite critical uh which I rein in now with compassion but it is that it's kind of a strength of that part of the cycle and and in a summer would be kind of the doing and the action but I think in a in a spring may not come yeah as as naturally or it didn't for me and it will for you know for other people but it's kind of having that um that strength of planning and remembering that like vulnerability that you feel as you get that resurgence of energy so it's like kind of remembering like okay I kind of feel a bit vulnerable here I'm gonna feel like this but 10 times more in like two weeks time so it's kind Mm -hmm. of like a nice time because you're not in inner summer if you let inner summer like 
person kind of rule your planning oh my gosh then you're, you're probably going to be in for a shock because I remember when I did <laughs> planning in, in the summer and I was like I'll do this and this and this and then I was yeah. like you know a few days later like what yeah. was that post-ovulation like why <laughs> what have what I done did- what was I thinking? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So kind of reminding ourselves like how we kind of feel that little tenderness, that vulnerability mm. um, and remembering, you know, kind of using that as a strength when you're planning as well. So mm. Mm. And, and I, I always think it's nice to um, we mentioned it in the live as well to to, to just like remind ourselves what the hormones are doing because they're so powerful. Mm. Um and so um, we were saying that the estrogen is rising. Yes, estrogen is spring. rising. Yes, yes. So estrogen yeah. is rising. I can like, I feel like I can feel it on day five for me. That oh, kind really? of see that resurgence of energy, and I'm like, I'm always like, oh, is this the estrogen? And I'm like, tap me up. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's sweet, so sweet estrogen. Yeah, sweet, sweet <laughs> estrogen, guys. I'm proud so, of you. Uh, something so. I recently listened also to a podcast called 28 ish days later, which I'd yeah. highly recommend to everyone watching this. Yeah. Um, it's a BBC sounds podcast. Um, and it's, and it's amazing. It's, it's about the cycle, like all the stuff we're talking about and more. And it's 15 minute episode and they did 28 episodes, right? 15 oh, nice. Minutes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, of course it's 28 ish because it can be, is it 21 or 22 days to 30? It can five? be. Um, it can be, yeah, up to 35. I think generally, ideally, we're looking for 27, 28 to 31. Anything, mm. I think, outside of that range. It isn't like a, oh, my God, an emergency. But definitely, if it's sort of 25 to like 35, I think that would, 35, 36, to me, would say probably perimenopausal or... Mm, right. with something else going on and then yeah. if it's shorter again it might it's just worth having like blood tests done and just having a little look into that because it could for me it varied as well with like when I went vegan and stuff so it can vary with diet mm. and things um yeah. but yeah so ideally a, a kind of a healthier yeah kind of um, okay. cycle yeah so it's worth having a little yeah. um look into that but so anyway on this podcast mm. um they were saying that um they have so a lot of um historically a lot of medical research has been done on men and not women it's a big data gap for women um like research done on women um so a lot of like medical stuff and health stuff that is recommended is actually recommended for that it's recommended for everyone but it's actually suits men who have a different hormone cycle to women but anyway one of the things they were saying was they've started doing tests on women and monitoring brain brains scans and hormones and everything mm. um on in all these medical and health research trials and what they found was our gray matter increases so our brain actually grows when estrogen rises so Ooh, each yeah I've heard of this somewhere as well I, and someone yeah. else I met it might have been Carly that mentioned it uh, interesting yeah and you have as well I remember you saying yeah so it's it's obviously like I don't I'm not like a researcher in this area but that's my that's my sort of lay understanding is that so women our brains actually change like physically Mm -hmm. we have more gray matter when we have more estrogen so that also because you were talking about you know I can do all the things and I'm going to plan the hell out of this. And it's, and it, we do actually have more brain. Yeah, <laughs> we have, yeah, more, we have yeah. more stuff in there that can handle more things. But then as soon as the estrogen drops, that gray matter recedes. So mm. it's, it, so we don't have that capacity anymore. Yeah. So it's, and we also uh, kind of off the back of that with ADHD brains, you have the dip, in estrogen um as especially as the progesterone is kicking in so as your estrogen is dipping and your progesterone is kicking in um sort of going into inner autumn that brings with it GABA which I always think of as like ABBA <laughs> picture of that in the PMDD guide I've written there's like it's all written out and there's like a picture of ABBA it's just great I'm like not to be confused with ABBA um but it brings with it GABA 
and that kind of like what helps us to like want to kind of chill out and everything but it effectively and this is what I've written in the thing and if you you're you know if you've got a little ones just pop their ears for a second but as the GABA um uh, it rises as the progesterone rises it effectively cock blocks the uh serotonin neonephrine neonephrine which I can never say but one day I will nail it and the um dopamine so it really starts wow. which I call the three musketeers so I I kind of think of it like ABBA is cock blocking the three musketeers I don't know why that's how my brain works a bit um but it kind of is sort of stopping stopping those things from performing to their peak so that's quite mm-hmm. interesting yeah kind of I'd like to yeah look at that a bit more with the with the gray yeah. matter because it definitely and that's why a lot of ADHD is real and that's how I realized I've got ADHD was from from charting but also a lot of later diagnosis of like perimenopausal women they realize because I guess there's and I don't know enough about it but I'm kind of looking into it at the moment but I'm guessing that as as you hit into perimenopause I think there maybe is a dip in estrogen as well perhaps there's more yes. progesterone something's going on there um, yeah. and then again those the symptoms are heightened so a lot of women are yeah. thinking oh why is this so strong and then uh, they're realizing actually there's something else underlying like ADHD so it's really interesting how it and also like off the back of that and I think we might have mentioned it last week but also when you're uh, on your bleed your brain is the most um, I think the 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 um, two sides of the brain, the hemispheres, are, are the most connected, I think, when you're on your bleed. And we only see oh, wow. them, um, otherwise in tribes. So if you look at brain scans of tribes, they have that all the time, whereas mm. we have, women have that um, when they are, or menstruators have that when they're on their bleed. So that's really interesting. And actually with tribes, it's like that all the time, I guess, because they don't have, you know, TV. <laughs> like, you know... <laughs> yeah all this kind of thing that affect it so it's really interesting um we'll have to do a deep dive on the brain the juicy brain yeah fascinating how it yeah literally changes and like you say the capacity like my capacity on those weeks is so much different I have to think like when I'm planning to bring it all back to the planning when I'm planning what is my capacity realistically which I hate because ADHD I want to do all the things but I have to be like Saoirse realistically you will be a crying mess on the floor if you do this thing then you just will or if you do this Mm. thing and this thing and this thing and this thing um so it's really yeah it's really interesting to kind of look at yeah the planning and 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 who's in charge what 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 shade of your cycle is in charge um of the planning um yeah yeah. can we we talk about because we I feel like we missed this completely last time but goddesses we wanted to like yeah. talk about companion goddesses for each yeah. cycle each season sorry yeah I love that yeah I was saying to Julia that I love I always think of like different goddesses to work with and Julia was like like companion goddesses and I was like that is amazing <laughs> I love it um yeah I love that so much so yeah I would say like a goddess for in a spring would be Persephone because Persephone is like the Greek um daughter of oh it's not Heracles what's her name oh it's gone now it'll come back but uh she basically so her kind of story is that she um she goes she gets lured I think into the underworld by Demeter I think is her mum so she gets lured into the underworld by Hades and I think that Hades manages to trick Persephone into eating uh I think it's like six pomegranate seeds and also just as a side, pomegranates in like, um, don't even ask me what era, but in ye olde paintings, when you see pictures of pomegranates, it's actually representative of the vagina. So just oh. linking that back, which I just think is an interesting link. So for Stephanie's <laughs> in the underworld, um, I think she, she can only stay in the underworld um, if she eats food from the underworld. So she gets tricked into eating like six um, pomegranate mm. seeds. Um, but I think because she only eats because she only eats six, um, she only has to be living in the underworld as Hades' wife for half of the year. So like the other six months, she's wow. allowed to come up. And when she comes up and then as like a I think kind of like as a thing of anger or whatever, her mum, uh, Demeter, I think it's Demeter, she kind of makes it so that it's like frosty and really cold for like half the year and then when Persephone is allowed to kind of come up and rejoin her mum um then it, that's when like the flowers will come so spring kind of comes so that's yeah. why yeah she kind of reminds me of that and that was like a 
little rendition, but if you listen to Stephen Fry's, um, he, I think it's in Heroes, really, really good. And it's all about the Greek gods and I just love it. But that's a little snippet of why I would have Persephone. Um, and again, actually in, in cycle syncing, there'll be some goddess work. So really kind of practicing working with goddesses. Cause I just like to mix the, like the pragmatic with the mystical, like I just think mm. it's good to have a bit of woo and um, also some like ritual in there. And um, yeah, so you can kind of work with Persephone in different ways. And I've done like a really nice, like yoga nidra, um, which is like a really relaxing practice. Again, it's great for rest. It's kind of like a meditation, but you're lying down <laughs> and uh, you're really relaxing the whole body. And I did a really nice um, meditation when I did a in a spring. Spring Equinox workshop earlier this year. That's it. So I, I kind of have one recorded, um, which I'm, I'm going to re-record. But uh, it was kind of a link to, yeah, this really nice like visual with bringing in Persephone. Um, so she would be like my goddess companion. And also she's like the maiden, you know, that's kind of the the archetype of that part of the cycle of inner spring is the maiden. So um, Persephone is like mm. a great like example of that. So I don't know about you, Julia, do you have, do you have any goddesses that you would work with or did you have anything, did you have any like different ideas? What, what were you, what were your thoughts? Well, I, I, I yeah, I, don't, I feel like I'm not very up to speed with the goddesses, but yeah. I really like- I fell into a wormhole. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I really like that every time you do a practice or a workshop or an event that you have a companion goddess. And mm. I just think it's nice to like, I don't know, it's just nice to have, they're almost a little like, yeah, a companion or a guide or, yeah, it's just nice to have a sort of, I don't know I guess it's kind of like a female role model <laughs> like, it kind of is... reminds me of like you know like magical like um uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch it's kind of like the animals you know like Salem it's kind of like having your little animal I don't know it's oh. like your thing I don't know it's just kind of a yeah, yeah like a companion it's just a little great friend yeah, yeah and to kind of tap into that energy to like remind you like oh you can be playful and it's almost like as we as we learn about Persephone as well it's like she doesn't really it's it's kind of seems like I don't know the way it's kind of said is that she doesn't she doesn't mind being in the underworld and and you know it's kind of her mum that's like what you know but she just ah. doesn't mind being this kind of this amazing like queen like next to Hades in the underworld mm. and then the other shade of her is like this maiden in springtime mm. so I love that because it's also reminds me of like the different shades of our cycle like we can be like last week when I'm like raging <laughs> But that's okay to have this sacred rage that's yeah. fine as well and then yeah this week when you're feeling more playful or whatever that that's also a great energy to have so it kind of reminds me that like, all the shades are welcome and even if society you know bigs up one shade more than others or yeah. sees it as more valuable it's not <laughs> it's just lessons to unlearn so yeah I love um I love tapping into a bit of a bit of goddess yeah and I guess it's also um it's like it's power right a, a god and a gossip a goddess mm. is like they're powerful right so it's yeah. like a feeling like no matter what season you're in you are powerful in a different way like you like you're saying you know each season has its strengths and its weaknesses but mm. you can be powerful in each season and in, in different ways and yeah. you don't have to feel like um like okay spring and so you know spring is particularly it's like oh I'm in the maiden phase I'm gonna go frolicking in a field and feel sexy or whatever you know and then and then you're like in a couple of weeks you're like oh where did it go you know <laughs> but it's okay like you're like oh I'll just like like uh, you know like go and chat to Carly <laughs> it's also yeah. cool to, to be like that so yeah and I think it's also like that as you maybe like as you get older I think Uma Dismal talks about this in her book Yoni Shakti which is this massive amazing book but she has like companion goddesses as she was writing the book which I thought was really cool she was mm. like just calling on these goddesses and she's incredible and she talks about these different goddesses in the cycle and it's really interesting but also as as a phase of life like there'll be different periods in time. It doesn't matter. It's not necessarily chronological, but there'll be different periods in time where a woman has different goddesses or taps into those different energies. So you might be, um, 
you might be in your perimenopausal, which is typically like an inner autumn, that's like an autumn time in a woman's life, right? Um, mm. But also you might be, and that might come with like rage and it might come with like a wildness and fearless abandon. Because also you're just old and you don't give a crap. Like I don't give a toss about as much stuff as I did when I was younger. And I, was like, I can't wait till I'm like, you know, another 10 years and I give less of a crap, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, so I think that's quite cool, kind of releasing yeah. those shackles. But equally, yeah, you might be, you might kind of tap, tap into those. I mean, I feel like very in tune with my inner autumn, probably because of the PMDD stuff, but also because I do get really pissed off. But like, I mean, even the other day, I think I was messaging you and I was like, I just infuriates me that I have to work when I'm on my bleed I'm like I just really and why is moon days why is menstrual leave not a thing everywhere all the time like yeah. why am I working I, I'd be so much better like for your company I'd be so much more productive yeah. if you just let me rest for days one to three and I won't be really freaking annoyed and but also just very like uh with I think the slowness that comes in the space space spacey stuff stuff there also comes a lot of self-doubt because I'm double checking my work and things. I'm like, oh, do I remember? To? And I'm kind of, there's mm. a high level of anxiety that rides with that. And it gets annoying. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to like police myself because I'm worried I'll make a mistake. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it probably does. The grand matter. scheme of life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's really cool. But yeah, Uma talks about having different um, goddesses in different parts of your life and, and throughout this book. And it's really yeah. cool. And it's just, yeah tapping into those different powers so yeah I love that. I and, yeah power and energy mm. yeah mm. so um yeah so s- should we wrap up there um I think so yeah I think on? so yeah yeah I reckon uh I think that's you know that's that's good what we've got if you're listening to this um and you have Instagram check out Instagram because we did a live yeah. there earlier we are going forward we're going to do the zooms first um as a little pre-recorded and then we're gonna kind of pick a topic that we want to deep dive on for Instagram because we're going to keep them a bit shorter uh, but this time around just because of life stuff we did it the opposite way um but yeah <laughs> so um yeah so make sure you um give us a message or an email yeah. or um I'm on Instagram as um Sorsha so s-o-r-c-h-a underscore r-a-t-t-i-g-a-n underscore you can always send me a message you can if you're seeing this I might put some clips of this like on YouTube and Bitstudio going forward so yeah it's on YouTube you can pop it in the comments or you can send me an email um or whatever so if you have any like questions or if you have any requests as well Mm -hmm. um if you want to deep dive into some other topics um or to do cycle awareness um then yeah you're very welcome and also if you don't have a physical bleed like we have some episodes that will come out and also the yeah. last week with, with Inner Winter, we looked at that a bit more, but there'll be some more stuff. So if you don't have a have a bleed, whether you're a medical reason, whether you are, um, you know, not assigned female at birth or whatever the reason is, there's other ways that you can tap into working cyclically. And this is an inclusive yeah. space. So we're really excited to dive in. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for now, Julia. Anything else? Yeah. You want to I, well, I really liked what we said in the live, which was, I feel like we have a sort of, tagline for this which is be tender with yourself in yes spring. yeah I in love spring. That. yeah ten- yeah oh yeah the bit of tenderness yeah got to have a bit of tenderness yeah what was it we were singing that is it got to have a bit of tenderness, tenderness. Yeah. yeah it was a shrek wedding. <laughs> wedding yeah 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 so i love that i think that should be the yeah. spring phrase yeah spring fling yeah little little yeah move ten move of tenderness tenderly move tenderly move of tenderness so, yeah yeah have that yeah it's important I think and yeah emerge slowly so mm, yeah. I love that um yeah two weeks time we'll be yes. exploring you might get it sooner it depends on the how we do it going forward but we're playing with it it's in the spring we're playing um <laughs> and uh we'll be looking at um uh in the summer so that's ovulation so we kind of be doing a little deep dive into that if you have any questions about that, let us know equally on any of the topics, or just anything really, just pop us a message. We don't yeah. mind. Yeah, awesome. Thank right, you. I'm going to stop the recording. So thanks, guys, okay. and uh, tune in next time. Bye 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 bye. <laughs> See so, sorry, I'm to stop it. <laughs> bye. <laughs>